Hello, and welcome back to my instructions on Beepbox. Last time, we went over how to change our rhythms and how to place notes down in, Beep, in this program, as well as how to use our scale feature and our key function. Today, we're really going to focus on changing our instruments and how to layer different instruments on top of each other. So as you can see, I've already written down a, uh, a melody for us to use. But if I wanted to change which instrument is playing the melody, I just come down here where it says type, and you have a long list of different instruments that you could have playing. So it kind of depends on what type of music you're trying to write. And that's going to really indicate which instruments you should be using. So you really do have to play around with it a little bit, figure out what you want. Right now, I'm trying to write a retro video game kind of theme. So I'm going to come over here to the retro preset. And I've already listened to a few of these. And my favorite one out of these was the square wave. So I'm going to choose that. And we'll listen to the melody so far. There we go. But if I want to change the melody, well, not change it, but if I want to add more to it, here's what we got to do. We got to look down, down here at our sequencer. So right now, I want you to notice all of these are blue. That means that all of this is going to be the same instrument, which I set to my square wave. But if I click down here on the yellow, I just change my instrument. So it should sound a little different. And you can come over here and decide what instrument exactly you want playing it. Right now, I chose a saw tooth lead. I think it just gives a nice, a nice uh, video game sound from it. So here's the kind of supporting accompaniment that I wrote for. And now if I hit play, we can hear what they both sound like together. So, so far, we have two instruments playing. We have my saw wave, I mean, my square wave, rather, and my saw. But I can add even more to it. So, we have our third instrument right down here. I'm adding a little bit more just to kind of fill out the sound a little bit. I want you to notice that with each of these, I'm starting on the same note, and they're kind of progressively getting longer and longer. So this one kind of goes up, and it gets to something higher. This one is just kind of laying low. The reason I'm doing that is kind of just so the melody is still pretty clear. You can hear that this is up at the forefront. Everything else right now is just being used to kind of support that. All right, and our last one down here, this one's a little bit different. This is only going to be your percussion, so we're adding drums now to it. Um, right now, I chose, once again, chip sounds so that it sounds kind of video gamey. And let's hear what we got so far. Next thing I would like to talk about is our sequencer down here. There's a lot going on here, and let me just try my best to explain some of it. So down here, we have this purple bar. If you extend this, you're basically telling the music that you want it to keep on going. If you make it shorter, you're saying it only needs to be this long, and whatever's in this space, it will loop over and over and over again. So right now, I want to make a four, four pattern kind of thing. All right. So now we're going to each of our individual boxes. You see that this has the number one in it. That means that this is my first measure. So the next measure, the next box, has the same thing. I'm basically just saying, whatever you did here, I want that to happen again. So we have our first melody, and then it jumps over here. Same thing. 
But if I decide that I want to change it, I would change the number here by clicking on the arrows up or down. And then I can write something new in there. We have first box, second box. Right? So right now for my song, I want to do one thing, do it again, and then we'll change it the third time. And then for the last one, we'll make it happen, do the same thing once again. Let's hear it. Then it changes, and we go back to the original. And then the music is going to repeat itself because of this purple bar. But here's the thing. We did that with one line, but we can add in all four of our instruments and have them all do stuff the same way. So if you don't mind me just adding a few of these things in. I also want you to notice that each measure, each uh, instrument has their own stuff. So the one here is not the same as this one. You have to write it differently for each individual instrument. So pretty simply, I only wrote 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different things. And we already have a little song coming up. Purple, it repeated back to the beginning. So what I like so much about this is it really makes you focus on what material, what material you're going to reuse, and what material you kind of are going to make fresh. And it really does help you focus on that type of stuff. So as you see, the first two measures, the first two blocks, I should say, are exactly the same. But then when we get to the third one, that's when I finally change it up a little bit. And it's okay to go back to the what you were using before. It's fine if you change it. It's really all up to you. And that's kind of what makes this such a powerful tool. You can also extend this all the way over, and then you get a lot more opportunities to change up the music. All right, that's all I have for you today. Hopefully that's enough for you guys to get started and really get deep into this. All right, have a great rest of your day and stay safe.